Well, hello, either good morning or good afternoon to our audience and to my dear Reverend Linda and Kathy. So we have Kathy C and Kathy Katie again today. I'd like to open us up in prayer before we begin sharing. And so I would invite you to just get comfortable, sit back, relax, and close your eyes if you want. And I'll just say a little prayer that will open us up. So my prayer for you is we pray that you grow closer and closer to God with each passing day and that you feel him working in every area of your life. May your relationship with him bring you great fulfillment, purpose, and joy. In the name of our Heavenly Father, I say, Amen. So, I get to start us today with a topic, and I don't even know where I got this book, but I found it and I was reading parts of it and it's called lovability knowing how to love and be loved now you wouldn't think that would be anything we need to write about but it was written by Robert Holder and he's a PhD so let me start he says to know love you must first accept that love cannot be defined no amount of words can define love because love is not just a name the intellect can't define love because the intellect deals with ideas and love is not just an idea. No one person holds the copyright on love because love is bigger than all humanity. Religion cannot define love because love is too spiritual for any religion. Wow. Science cannot define love either because the essence of love cannot be trapped in test tubes and split apart in particle accelerators but keep faith. Just because love cannot be defined, it doesn't mean that you can't get to know love. It's worth remembering that many of the most interesting things in life cannot be defined. Their indefinable quality is part of their wonder and majesty. Majesty. Psychologists aren't able to define the psyche, and yet we keep on exploring the mind. Priests who worship God accept that in truth, there is no name for God. Physicists now recognize that the universe is made up of energy, but they can't define what energy is. It is important to realize that in physics today, we have no knowledge what energy is, said Richard Feynman. He's the winner of the Nobel Prize for Physics. A Course in Miracles has a, uh, a saying that I wanted to share. He said, love wishes to be known, completely understood and shared. It has no secrets, nothing that would keep apart and hide. So I want to uh, go on. He says, some people have said that love cannot be defined because love is coy and mysterious and elusive, and it likes to play tricks with us. From these descriptions, it's clear to me that love has been endowed with the qualities of a man or woman who is rejecting sexual and romantic ad advances. There is another case of projection, closing the doors of perception. My personal experience is that love can be known, just not defined. Love is available to everyone without exception. Love has already been given to us. Now all we have to do is give ourselves to love. He goes on to say, when I began my journey into love, I thought I had to define it before I could think about it. But my attempts to define love came to nothing. No arrangements or words or ideas could capture the whole truth. When I couldn't define love, I was tempted to stop my inquiry. There's no point studying something that you can't define, I thought. But despite my frustration, I stuck with my inquiry because I understood somehow that even though love can't be defined, the heart knows what love is. Love cannot be defined, but it can be recognized. And so I'd say to myself, I want to know about love. And then I'd pay attention and keep on paying attention. And that's all that any of us have to do. And when we do this, we will make a joyful discovery, which is that love will teach us what love is. And his final quote was, let your teacher be love itself. And that came from Rumi. So I, I loved this topic and I'm just want to get some feedback from my lady friends here. What do you think? 
Um, I'd like to share. Um, I, I thought that was very interesting is that you really can't define love because for every person, love is different and how they show or express their love is different. And sort of sitting there and trying to pigeonhole people into saying, well, you know, they're they're not a very loving person. Well, maybe in other ways than that. So when I looked at it, and I like the thing, love will teach us what love is, is that if we open ourselves up to it, that we will then recognize where the love is around us. And so often, you know, I define love as based on my experience or my knowledge or you know, it's sort of like, well, this is what my expectation of love should look like. And, you know, it sort of brought up the fact that sort of some people it's about love is all about sexuality and things like that, where it's not, it's that deeper, meaningful connection um, between people and places and things. It's like, that's when people go, oh, I love, I love this, you know, I love that, you know, and it's an inanimate object, but it's something that they feel a connection to. And it's like, I think this was very interesting in recognizing that love, you know, for me is re-looking at what I consider love and that lovability is my openness to seeing love around me. So thank you for bringing that to the table, Kathy. Sure. This is a wonderful topic, um, and and thank you both for your shares and bringing it about. I, I love this. I'm going to go a little different way, as I love to do. Um, I find it very interesting that in that article, he identifies you can't define love, you can't define energy, and you can't define God. Well, they're all the very same thing. And it's amazing that he, you know, really tapped into that. We know that the energy that creates the world and is everywhere present is God. And we know that love is God. God is all love. So I found this, this article wonderful. I found it beautiful. I was going to say early on before Kathy Cronin's discussion that, um, lovability a little different than defining love in in my perception is for me a level of self-acceptance letting myself be lovable for me was a big part of just accepting myself for who I am and stop trying to project who I thought other people wanted me to be and like I said kind of a different different look at the topic of lovability but as far as defining it you know it's all God and and I love the topic thank you so much so anybody want to make another comment before I close this out okay then please join me in prayer God we give thanks as we reach out and find new ways of understanding all you are, all we are, and all that is. God, we know our essence is of you, is of love, and is of energy. We rejoice in this knowledge and being able to understand, express, and live from that knowledge. It's truly a blessing. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. And thank you for joining us here today. We hope that you enjoyed this topic. Let us know in the comments. Did you love it? Did you not? If you have a topic you would like a panel to explore, please leave it in the comments. And if you would like to be a part of this panel, as we explore new topics every week, we would love to have you. Thanks for being with us. Namaste. Thank you for joining us and let's stay connected and grow in spirit. We are on Facebook, search for Unity Church of El Cajon and follow us and like our posts. You can reach us on YouTube at Unity Church of El Cajon. Please subscribe to our channel, watch our videos, and leave comments. 
which can help us improve. We are on the web at unityofelcajon.org. Email or call our church office to receive our weekly newsletters, which lists all of our activities and opportunities to learn and grow together.